Hi, I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. In the video on central tendency, I mentioned that there's a more precise way of calculating the median other than just taking the mean of the middle two scores. This is only for large data sets of a continuous variable where we have lots of repeated scores near the median. This can create a situation where the precise middle point of our data, where 50% of scores are below and 50% are above, is not quite the same as the mean of the two middle scores. So let's walk through the conceptual logic of this with an example. Then we'll see if we can derive a formula for calculating this more precise median. First, this only applies to continuous variables. That's because they can be seen as having infinite fractional parts. So if I measured time in whole seconds, technically each second could be divided up to an infinite number of decimal places. So let's say that I measured time in seconds for a task for eight participants, and I got the scores three, four, five, six, 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 and eight. Our simple median method would give us a median of six, the mean of the two middle scores, six and six. But this actually isn't the precise middle of our data because we have all these repeated scores at six. So how do we find this precise point? This is a case where I think visualizing the data can help us to understand. So let's draw a picture here where we have our data represented on a line and each block will represent a participant's score in whole seconds. So we have a score at three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, then four scores at six seconds, and one score at eight seconds. Now our median should be the point where 50% of scores are below and 50% are above. That means we should have four boxes to the left and four boxes to the right. And if we draw a line right at six, we see that this isn't quite right. The area of the boxes to the left is larger than the area of the boxes to the right. This tells us that our median is actually somewhere between five and six. So how do we find this point? First, we need to recognize that our scores are in whole seconds. That means that a score of five technically could be anywhere from 4.5 up to 5.5. This is called the class interval. And we can also see that if we go to 5.5 here, we have three boxes to the left. That tells us that our median must be at least 5.5. But if we go all the way to 6, we've gone too far. So our median is going to be somewhere between 5.5 and 6. So we don't need all those boxes that are stacked up at 6. We actually just need a portion of them in order to reach four boxes to the left of our line and four boxes to the right. And you might see that since there's four boxes stacked up at 6, we could just take a quarter of each of those boxes. That would give us four boxes to the left, four boxes to the right. And so from 5.5, the lower limit of our median, we move up one quarter of a box, one quarter of our class interval, and that's gonna give us a precise median of 5.75. This precise median can also be called an interpolated median. And interpolated here means that you're finding a value that's between your known values. So our known values were whole seconds, like five or six. And our interpolated median is gonna be between those points. Now, we'd never actually take the time to do this with most samples, because with smaller samples, a slight over or underestimate of the median really won't matter very much. But if we had a really large data set, then we might have hundreds or even thousands of scores all stacked up at the median. Now, in order to find the precise median there, we wouldn't want to take the time to draw a diagram and slice up all the boxes. Instead, we probably want to use a formula. So let's see if we can derive the formula based on what we've already done here. What we did was we started at the lower limit of our median, 5.5. We said, okay, we know we're not at the median yet, but if we go all the way to six, we've gone too far. So we know it's gonna be at least 5.5 plus some fractional portion of these scores that are stacked up at six. So next we found the fractional portion. We said, okay, we're trying to get to four boxes. So that's our N over two, that's eight divided by two. That's the midpoint of our data we're trying to get to. But we already had three boxes to the left. So we don't need to worry about those. We can take those away. We're really only looking for one more box. And then in order to get that, we need to know, well, how many scores were stacked up at six? How many boxes are we dividing up? And so we're gonna divide by four. And then this gives us one fourth. And then the last question is, well, one fourth of what? So what was our class interval? And in our case, it was one second. So we need to add a quarter of a second. And so we add 5.5 plus 0.25. This gives us a total of 5.75 seconds. So that's the formula that we used even though we did it visually. So let's turn it into a real formula. We had the lower limit of the median, L, plus the fractional portion, which is N divided by two, 
minus the frequency of scores that are below the lower limit of the median. You've already counted those. And then you divide that by how many scores you're dividing up. That's the frequency of scores at the median, f of m. And then we multiply that times our class interval, h. So this is the formula for the interpolated median. Now, you'll probably never have to calculate this by hand, but if you're using software that gives you this interpolated median, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of where it's coming from. I hope you found this helpful. If so, let me know in the comments, like the video, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the hundreds of other psychology tutorials that I have on the channel. Thanks for watching.